<laughs> oh, hello. I didn't see you there. Today we'll be, we will be talking about the production of biodegradable polymers, specifically the production of polylactic acid. Now we've all heard the term biodegradable, but what does it actually mean? Biodegradable polymers are a type of polymer that breaks down after its intended purpose in a natural byproducts such as carbon dioxide, nitrogen gas, water, and organic matter. They are broken down by the enzymatic action of microorganisms like bacteria, fungi, and algae. Polymers can also degrade through other processes such as chemical hydrolysis and photodegradation and oxidation. Biodegradability can depend on the chemical structure of a molecule and its degrading environment. Biodegradable polymers are important because of the environmentally friendly impact they can have. The use of biodegradable polymers can assist in the reduction of the volume of garbage, compost, and carbon dioxide released into the atmosphere. One particular class of biodegradable polymer is polylactic acid. Polylactic acid, or PLA, is a biodegradable aliphatic polyester derived from 100% renewable resources such as corn and sugar beets. The degradation of polylactic acid occurs in two steps. The high molecular polyester chains hydrolyze to lower molecular weight products. The rate of this hydrolytic degradation is dependent on the temperature and humidity of the environment. After this initial step, microorganisms continue the degradation process by converting the lower molecular weight product into CO2, water, and organic material. Polylactic acid has good crease retention. It is grease and oil resistant, and it is a good barrier to flavor and aroma. These physical properties make PLA a suitable material for food packaging, plastic bags and bottles, and some medical sutures that could someday replace petroleum-based products. Now, there are three main industrial methods that deal with the production and improvement of polylactic acid. The first method is the ring opening polymerization of PLA using metal catalysts. The process begins with the production of lactic acid from the fermentation of dextrose found in corn and other plants. This is followed by a continuous condensation of the aqueous lactic acid to form a low molecular weight PLA pre-polymer. These are then converted into a mixture of lactide stereoisomers using a metal catalyst. The lactide mixture is then purified by vacuum distillation. Finally, higher molecular weight PLA is formed using a metal catalyzed ring opening polymerization reaction. Now here's Dustin to explain more about this process. I'm Dustin Brown and I'll be presenting the ring opening polymerization of lactide using metal catalysts. There's two main methods for manufacturing polylactic acid from lactic acid. The first method uses the direct polymerization of lactic acid. The second method uses the, cy the cyclic lactic acid dimer called lactide as an inter intermediate stage. This method is the focus of my discussion. There's an, there are advantages for using this ring opening polymerization method. One major advantage is that there's no hydrolysis of the ester, ester bond. This is a problem when trying to form high molecular weight polylactic acid from lactic acid monomers. The reaction is an equilibrium reaction that's difficult to remove all the water produced upon polycondensation of the lactic acid, which leads to shorter chains. Ring opening eliminates this issue since it's not a condensation polymerization reaction. This leads to longer chains. Advantages of lactide ring opening is that it's thermodynamically driven by the relaxation of the ring due to an ang angle strain, which means there's a reduction of energy needed for this step compared to lactic acid polymerization. By adding a metal catalyst component to this method, a longer, higher molecular weight PLA chain can be produced. But why is this important? When PLA is, pro is produced, intermolecular forces cause the molecule to wind and fold in on itself, forming large, bulky molecules. The range of physical parameters of plastics formed from these chains can, can be widened by forming larger molecular bundles. That is, they can be made stronger, more heat resistant, and less permeable, which greatly increases the applications of these plastics. Longer PLA chains are not the only advantages using metal catalysts. A ma major advantage is the control of stereochemistry. There are three, three isomers of lactide, L-lactide, P-lactide, and mesolactide. When the PLA is being formed, a methyl group can be in front or behind the PLA chain, which is 
which the chain winds around, when the chain winds around itself, the intermolecular forces causes a locking or a zippering of different parts of the chain. If the chain has stereo homogeneity, then it can lock in on itself more tightly. This forms a plastic that can withstand high temperatures. Companies such as NatureWorks LLC exploit the control of the stereochemistry of the PLA to make a wide range of products such as durable, protective plastics, bottles, home textiles, films, and more. Thanks, Dustin. Now here's Jacqueline to talk about another method. Polymerization by polycondensation of lactic acid. In the direct polycondensation of lactic acid, two stereoisomers can be used. Poly polylactic acid synthesized by this method can include both stereoisomers, just one, or in combination with other hydroxyl acids. Polylactic acid produced by direct polycondensation usually has a low molecular weight, which is not optimal for load-bearing medical applications, but it can be used in areas where the chemical properties are more important, such as in coating techniques and tissue adhesives. In one study, Polylactic acid was synthesized by direct polycondensation in the presence of citric acid, which has three carboxyl groups. This product is expected to have improved interactions with living systems. Tin 2 ethyl hexanoate was used as a catalyst. Results show that increasing the content of citric acid in the reaction mixture decreased the molecular weight of the product. It was also found that there could be possible limits of citric acid incorporation into the structure of the product. The reduction in melting temperature of the product corresponds to the citric acid concentration in the reaction mixture. Crystallinity was higher when more citric acid was used. Crystallinity can benefit various products through heat resistance, higher strength, and chemical resistance. Since citric acid terminates the growth of the polycondensate chain, the product has a significant reduction of molecular weight. Another study was conducted to synthesize polylactic acid by direct polycondensation but this time without catalysts or solvents. This product is compact and safe and simple for on-site cell plant production. In the absence of a strong acid, the lactic acid itself acts as its own catalyst. This method consisted of three steps, distillation, oligomerization, and polymerization. In the distillation stage, the L-lactic acid was heated to the distillation temperature of 150 degrees Celsius and atmospheric pressure. The oligomerization stage lasted between 150 and 300 minutes, and then the temperature was brought to the polymerization temperature, which changed in each trial. The polymerization stage lasted for 96 hours at the various temperatures. The reaction mechanism is overall second order because L-lactic acid is a strong acid that acts as a catalyst during polymerization. The highest molecular weight obtained was 1.49 times 10 to the negative 22nd kilograms. Other methods either resulted in a lower molecular weight or required complex reactors and facilities and included a purification step to remove the catalyst or solvent, which is very expensive. In this way, direct polymerization without the use of catalyst is more cost effective. These conditions are also suitable for on-site production. The results showed that the activation energy for direct polymerization was found to be larger than that of ring opening polymerization. Lactide was formed as a side product in this reaction method, and it can be used to make a higher molecular weight polylactic acid by ring opening polymerization methods. The yield of polylactic acid decreased with increasing polymerization temperature, and the polymerization temperature should therefore be restricted to the lower end of the range so that um, more polylactic acid is formed instead of lactide. Wow, thanks Jacqueline. Finally, here's Julie Hartz to discuss the enhancement of PLA's chemical and physical properties. So ring opening polymerization and direct polycondensation of polylactic acid are the most common methods of production in the industry, but these only produce unmodified polylactic acid, which is not the only form of PLA that you'll see in products. So what researchers are trying to do is modify polylactic acid with the goal of retaining already favorable physical properties and then enhancing its unfavorable properties with a combinatory material. So the physical properties that they're trying to improve upon are firstly PLA is very brittle, which limits its um, high impact strength applications such as uh, in orthopedic repairs and construction. Also, polylactic acid is slightly hydrophobic, 
which can give it a low cell affinity, and this has been shown to um, induce an inflammatory response in some organisms. And then finally, its degradation rate may actually be too slow which is not only not ideal in removing waste from landfills, but it also can be quite dangerous in biomedical applications. So what researchers are doing are they're blending polylactic acid with other biodegradable polymers to create these new desirable hybrids without sacrificing the biodegradable factor. Um, some notable results are blending polylactic acid with PCL, a rubbery polymer to improve toughness, actually increased elongation at break to 150% without really sacrificing tensile stress or modulus. Um, polylactic acid has also been blended with dextrin to create a more hydrophilic and biocompatible product, however this sacrificed tensile strength. Uh, polylactic acid has also been combined with collagen to improve degradation rate, but this again reduced tensile stress. And finally, polylactic acid and polymers such as starch have been shown to initially improve toughness, but over time, those improvements rapidly deteriorated with storage time. So based on these results, it's clearly difficult to enhance one property without really sacrificing another. But it's especially important to improve toughness, biocompatibility, and degradation rate, or else polylactic acid won't really have a chance in high stress impact products, thermally resistant products, or biomedical products. So researchers' challenges is to find balance with durable toughness, biocompatibility, enhanced degradation rate, rate without really sacrificing other processability factors. And this can really only be accomplished through continuous extensive research. The importance of PLA lies in its environmentally friendly biodegradation properties and its safe industrial pro production. With further research and testing, polylactic acid may someday replace petroleum-based plastics all over the world. Thank you for your time. I'm Elliot Meeker, and remember, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the precipitate.